Hey, hey, everybody. Okay, we're continuing our discussion on special right triangles in this video. Last video, we looked at 45, 45, 90 triangles and saw how we could use the sine, the exact values for sine, cosine, and tangent of 45 degrees to find missing measurements in that type of triangle. This time, we're again going to be looking for exact values for trig ratios, but in a 30, 60, 90 triangle instead of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so let's talk about this then. Um, I'm wanting you, by the end of this video, to know, or at least to begin to think about, what the exact value of the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees is, and what the exact value for sine, cosine, and tangent of 60 degrees is. And in order to get that, I need to have a discussion here about equilateral triangles, it turns out. All right, let's suppose we've got an equilateral triangle, and all the sides of that triangle are two. Now, what in the world does an equilateral triangle have to do with 30, 60, 90 triangles? Ah, well, that's simple enough. You can always create a 30, 60, 90 triangle by drawing the altitude of an equilateral triangle. All right? Because when you do that, you take this 60 degree angle up here and you split it into two 30 degree angles. And so, each half of that equilateral triangle is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. All right, then. What I'm curious about is what is the ratios between the side lengths in a triangle that has a 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree angle. And one of those relationships can be illustrated simply through dividing an equilateral triangle in half like I've done. Because here's one of the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. Now, isn't that going to have to be half of the entire side of the triangle? And so that's going to be 1. You got 1 and 1 right there. All right, so the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter of the two legs. And then I could use Pythagorean theorem to find out what the other one is. Let's just say we call that side A. And we'll say it's A for altitude, also just A from Pythagorean theorem. We would be able to say that A squared plus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared. And so eventually you get 4 minus 1, that's 3, and then the square root of that is the square root of 3. There we go, that's the other leg in a right triangle, or in a 30-60-90 right triangle, which, uh, you know, if the hypotenuse is 2 and the shorter leg was 1, longer leg is going to be the square root of 3. All right, now let's use that to figure out what the sine of a 30-degree angle is and what the cosine and tangent of a 30-degree angle are, and then we'll do the same for the 60-degree angles. If you look at the 30-degree angle in this triangle, the sine of that angle will be a ratio between the 1, that opposite leg, and the hypotenuse, which is 2. So the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. That's always true. Sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. If I look at the 30 degree angle and I try to find its cosine, well, that's a ratio between its adjacent leg, which is the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2, which is 2. So I'm going to get the square root of 3 over 2 and the tangent of that angle, that 30 degree angle is going to be 1 over the square root of 3. Which, when written without any thirds or radicals in the denominator, is the square root of 3 over 3. All right, now just like I told you in the 45, 45, 90 video, these are values that I'm expecting you to have memorized. You should have memorized the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees within this, the context of this chapter. Let's look at the 60 degree angles, or angle, in this triangle that's on the right side. The sine of that angle would be the square root of 3 over 2, and that's what the sine of 60 degrees is. In fact, to check that out, if it makes you feel better, to, as far as your understanding goes, go ahead and divide the square root of 3 by 2 on your calculator, and then type in the sine of 60 degrees on your calculator, you'll see that they give you the same values. All right, the cosine of that 60-degree angle, well, the adjacent leg is 1, 
hypotenuse is 2. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. It's the same as the sine of 30 degrees. Right, those are equal. Sine of 60 degrees is equal to cosine of 30 degrees. And then the tangent of the 60 degree angle, opposite over adjacent, it's the square root of 3 over 1, which is just the square root of 3. You need to memorize those values. But let me show you how to use them over the rest of the video. We're going to go through two examples. In this one, I'm telling you to find, well, in both of them, I'm telling you to find the exact value of each variable. And I've got an alpha, I've got an x, and I've got a y here. Well, you see this right triangle has a 60-degree angle, and so since it is a right triangle with a 60-degree angle, we can already quite easily figure out the alpha is 30 degrees because alpha and the 60-degree angle have to be complementary to one another. And then as far as x and y goes, let's say that we want to find the value of x. Now, we, we know both angle measures, but let's use the one that was given to us originally. x is the adjacent leg to that 60-degree angle, and you're given the hypotenuse. That means we could make this trig ratio the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to x over 12.8. All right, now here's where what we're going to be doing is different than what we did in the first video for this chapter. We're trying to make sure that we keep this written as an exact value. So instead of typing cosine of 60 degrees into your calculator like you normally would, we're going to go ahead and use that exact value that we just learned a moment ago. The cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So I'm going to say 1 half is equal to x over 12.8. Okay, we can hit x by itself if we multiply both sides by 28, so, or 12.8. So that's half of 12.8 is equal to x. So x is equal to 6.4. Good with that? I hope so. We still got to find the value of y, of course. Okay, now, from our 60-degree angle, y is the opposite leg, and we knew the hypotenuse to begin with, and I prefer to use the measurement that was originally given to you, if at all possible, for accuracy's sake. We can use a sine ratio to compare the opposite leg and hypotenuse for that 60-degree angle. So the sine of 60 degrees is equal to y over 12.8. Now the sine of 60 degrees, you know, is the square root of 3 over 2. Now here's a situation where, well, I guess it's kind of the same as what we just did. Let's multiply both sides by 12.8 in order to get y by itself. All right, so the square root of 3 over 2 times 12.8 is equal to y. And then, well, you got the square root of 3 over 2 times 12.8. 12.8 divided by 2 is 6.4 still. So you're going to get 6.4 square root of 3 for that value. That's our exact answer. Leave it exact, in that exact fashion. Good. One more example to do in this video. And it's, it's a tough one. I'm going to combine 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles into one picture here. You can see I've got a couple of different triangles. Well, a couple of different right triangles. There's even more triangles than that. Triangle FGH is a right triangle and one of its angles is 30, so that whole triangle is the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then triangle NGH is a right triangle with a 45 degree angle, meaning it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And you see the values that we're trying to find, W, X, Y, and Z. Now, I'm just going to go alphabetically here. I kind of set it up so that you could go that way. It's not always the case. Works out nicely when it does, though. To find W, okay. Well, we have to decide which triangle we're able to use to find this unknown side to begin with. That 45, 45, 90 triangle would be nice if we knew x because x and w would be equal to one another. But we don't. The only measurement we're given is fh, and that's not part of that 45, 45, 90 triangle. It is part of that 30, 60, 90 triangle, though, right? It's the hypotenuse for that triangle. So let's use triangle fgh. And let's go to this 30 degree angle and let's use a trig ratio to find out what W is. That's the opposite leg. We know the hypotenuse. We're going to say that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to W over 8. 
Now, I've shown you a couple of these at this point. I prefer that you pause the video, try to figure this out on your own, and just check your work with me here in a moment. Go for it. And there you go. The sine of 30 degrees is one half. That's where this one half is coming from. And then I needed to multiply both sides by this denominator in order to get w by itself. So you got a half times 8. That's 4. w is equal to 4. All right. Well, then what else can we do? To find x... We know that's equal to W because they're the legs of this 45, 45, 90 triangle. So X is also equal to 4. Mark that over there. Well, how about Y? Y is the hypotenuse for that 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means we could take this 45 degree angle and we could either use the sine or cosine in order to find it. Let's say we use the cosine of 45 degrees. So we'll use x and y. Cosine of 45 degrees would equal x over y. Or 4 over y, since we already know what x is equal to. And then that gives us, well, what? The cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2, right? Remember that from the previous video? is equal to 4 over y. And this time, since our variable is in the denominator, it makes sense to cross-multiply. All right, and from cross-multiplying, we're going to get that the square root of 2 times y is equal to 8. So then y is equal to 8 over the square root of 2. And if you rationalize the denominator, you're going to find out that that's equal to 4 square root of 2. All right, so we've got W, we've got X, and we've got Y. I'll label that on the picture. Now for the value of Z. Now this one looks a little bit tricky at first because Z is part of this non-right triangle. Later on in this chapter, you'll learn how to um, use trig ratios with non-right triangles, but for now, we can only use trig ratios with right-angled triangles. So, how are we going to get around the fact that that's part of a non-right triangle? Well, it turns out that it's just a portion of one of the sides of that big right triangle, FGH. X plus Z together is equal to that distance FG, right? And we already know the value of X is 4. So, if we can find out the length of FG then we're going to be able to find out the value of z. And we can find out the length of fg because it is part of that 30, 60, 90 right triangle. It happens to be the adjacent leg to the 30 degree angle. So look at this trig equation that I'm going to make. I can say that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to fg. over 8. Remember, I still know the hypotenuse. So adjacent leg to hypotenuse, that's why I chose cosine. And then the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so I'll write that in there. And then fg is equal to z plus 4, we said. So let me substitute that there. Now I've got an equation that I can use in order to find the value of z. Go ahead and use cross-multiplication and see what you can come up with for z. All right, now through cross-multiplication, I'll get 8 times the square root of 3 is equal to twice z plus 4. Now, I chose not to distribute the 2 right now because I already knew what I was going to do next. I'm going to not bother with distributing, and instead I'm just going to go ahead and divide both sides of this equation by 2 right now in order to get z plus 4 by itself. Uh, so 8 square root of 3 divided by 2, that's 4 square root of 3, is equal to z plus 4. Then there's only one more step to getting z by itself. Of course, that's subtract 4 from each side of the equation. And so we'll get z equals 4 square root of 3 minus 4. 
All right, that's 30, 60, 90 triangles along with 45, 45, 90 triangles, and that's how you use exact values for those special right triangles when you're working with trig ratios. Appreciate it. I hope it made sense. I'll see you in class, guys.